pulmonary disease. The ministry will move one monitor for a short time to another neighbor's house to check the readings. After a couple of months, they will take their information to Dr. Hasselbach or another doctor of the Ministry of Health, and they may or may not decide to shut the burners down. Please let me clarify our position. We accept that it is reasonable to suppose that the testimonies of so many as named in this picture must trump in providing evidence of the fact that our dilemma is real. The problem with dealing with the Ministry of the Environment is that it represents a lengthy process. Further, there is no guarantee that even if there is evidence of environmental pollution, it will be stopped. A new report by the West Coast Environmental Law Association reveals the drastic decline in enforcement of BC's environmental laws. Between 1995 and 2005, enforcement actions by the Conservation Officer Service plummeted by more than half. I have here a copy of the prestigious U.S. Medical Journal, January the 1st, 2007, entitled Inhalation Toxicology, International Forum for Respiratory Research, Wood Smoke, health effects. A review states that pollution from wood smoke should be measured differently than any other kinds of air pollution because of the shape and size of the particles and the way it stays in the lungs for periods of time. In other words, according to the experts, the air monitors that the ministry is using are not the correct way to measure air pollution for wood smoke. Members of Council, the smoke sits in our streets, in our yards, in our homes, in our lungs, making us sick and fearing for our very well-being. We are appealing to you to do the right thing. We ask for immediate action. Mayfair Farms must be ordered to stop using wood-fired hydronic heaters. Additionally, we ask that you respond to us with your decision by Wednesday, October the 31st. I now ask two people to share a few words of testimony. And, and I heard what you said, Mr. Mayor, so I will cut that down to one Wendy Collins that you've already approved. And she's just going to share a very few words. Let me assure you that there are many who can testify to ill health as a result of smoke. Uh, Wendy Collins, share briefly with us, please. And that will end my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Wendy Collins, and I live at 1830 18th Avenue Southeast. I have lived here for eight years, raising a family and teaching piano in a music studio in my life. I have walked the hills here on numerous occasions for pleasure, relaxation, and exercise. I am in good health, and I have mild allergy to house dust. While I was out in the evenings going door to door with our petition to ban the burners, I had sore lungs. Breathing deeply, going up and down the hills, I inhaled lots of smoke. However, I did not allow this physical suffering to stop me from finishing the petition. I ask counsel now, please help me. I would like to be able to walk the hills of beautiful Hillcrest again without suffering the pain of smoke inhalation. <clears throat> I want to be healthy so I can continue on as a strong and healthy mother and music teacher. Thank you for your attention.
And then they're on the agenda that was scheduled. Oh, okay. I didn't understand. Right. Did you wish to say some more? Or you can speak oh, no, on I'm finished. I'm finished. Do the counselors have any questions for any of the presenters? Or any comment? Thank you, Your Worship. And I uh, did not sign the petition only because I felt, uh, although I am very affected by the smoke, that I shouldn't sign the petition. Um, I understand everybody's concern. I live it every day with you because I live very close to the burners. And um, I empathize with, with your comments, but I feel based on what we've had with regards to legal opinions, and I may ask the administrative officer or the director of Human services to speak to this, that we have no legal right to stop that. At this point, we've done everything we can to prevent future burners. Um, I think that you're asking us to go onto somebody's property and take these down or stop them from using them, and I don't think we have that right. And I guarantee you, if I felt that we did, um, could do more than what we've done at this point and left it in the Ministry of Environment's hands, I would. So I would like staff to clarify that because I think we're, based on the legal opinions we've received, is impossible to enforce. So that's all I have. Good. Thank you. Thank you. A last comment. I, I, I asked the administrator to respond to that. It was a question. I didn't hear what you said. What did you Concerning a legal opinion. Your Worship, that's correct. We've received legal advice. The city does not have the ability to go and have these uh, units removed retroactively. That that issue of non-conforming use is deeply entrenched in municipal law in British Columbia, and uh, we simply don't have the authority to do it. I'd also like to point out that the uh, municipal uh, government is an arm of the provincial government. We are subject to that. Mr. Sexsmith, you had something to say? Yes. Uh, please understand, Mr. Mayor. I, I, to know me is to know that will offend anyone. That's not my desire. But you must recognize that surely you must recognize that in this country of ours, every day across the land, laws are being changed, new laws are being enacted, old laws are being set aside, and that is certainly something that this county can do. And once again, I would only draw you to the attention of the Hudson decision. The Supreme Court gives you that authority. And I would suggest that you review it before you say that it cannot happen. Thank you. I have a question. Who is the legal authority that you are uh, consulting with? Your Worship, but the law firm in this case is Fulton and Company. Oh. Councilor Harrison. Great, thank you, Worship. Um, and, and thank you for all the people from Hillcrest who came out uh, this evening. I, I especially enjoyed your petition because it's uh, been signed by seniors and uh, I'm a I put myself in there. And also uh, many kids who I've taught in that area and recognize their names. Um, and I certainly uh, appreciate the power of, of your presentation. Um, I think as a counselor who, who sits I here, here to and I think if you were sitting here, you would feel the same way. Um, and, and I guess our feeling is we want, we of course would like to shut the burners down that are there and, uh, and remove them. I think anyone that heard this presentation would want to do that. What we're unsure about, and certainly I'm willing to, to review uh, you know, my position this evening, um, what we're told is that if we did that, if, you were at, if we do what you were asking us to do, this is what would happen. The owner of the property would sue us, would sue the city. And legal counsel tells us that the city would... And when the city would lose, the city would have to pay the, the court cost of um, to pursue us. And then that person would be on extremely firm ground to continue doing exactly what they're doing now. We'd be worse off than we are presently. If I thought differently than that, if I had legal opinion and were to act on uh, on an uh, on a objective reasoning, then I would do that. But if we act here on emotion, we're going to find ourselves in a big of trouble. <laughs>